During the French Revolution, the National Assembly, which existed from June 13, 1789 to July 9, 1789, was a revolutionary assembly formed by the representatives of the Third Estate of the Estates General. Thereafter it was known as the National Constituent Assembly, though popularly the shorter form persisted. Background Estates General had been called on May 5, 1789 to deal with France's financial crisis, but promptly fell to squabbling over its own structure. Its members had been elected to represent the estates of the realm, the first estate, the second estate and the third estate. The third estate had been granted double representation a euro that is, twice as many delegates as each of the other estates a euro but at the opening session on May 5, 1789 they were informed that all voting would be by power not by head, so their double representation was to be meaningless in terms of power. They refused this and proceeded to meet separately. Shuttle diplomacy among the estates continued without success until May 27. On May 28, the representatives of the third estate began to meet on their own, calling themselves the communes and proceeding with their verification of powers independently of the other bodies. From June 13 to June 17 they were gradually joined by some of the nobles and the majority of the clergy and other people such as the peasants. On June 13, this group began to call itself the National Assembly. The Assembly convenes, this newly created assembly immediately attached itself to the capitalists a euro the sources of the credit needed to fund the national debt a euro, and to the common people. They consolidated the public debt and declared all existing taxes to have been illegally imposed, but voted in these same taxes provisionally, only as long as the assembly continued to sit. This restored the confidence of the capitalists and gave them a strong interest in keeping the assembly in session. As for the common people, the assembly established a committee of subsistence to deal with food shortages. The king resists, Jacques Necker, finance minister to Louis XVI, had earlier proposed that the king hold a Tsar copyright ant royal in an attempt to reconcile the divided estates. The king agreed. But none of the three orders were formally notified of the decision to hold a royal session. All debates were to be put on hold until the Tsar copyright ant royal took place. Events soon overtook Necker's complex scheme of giving into the communes on some points while holding firm on others. No longer interested in Necker's advice, Louis XVI, under the influence of the courtiers of his privy council, resolved to go in state to the assembly, annul its decrees, command the separation of the orders, and dictate the reforms to be effected by the restored estates general. On June 19, he ordered the Sol des Apermel Tats, the hall where the National Assembly met, closed, and remained at Mali for several days while he prepared his address. Confrontation and recognition, two days later, deprived of use of the tennis court as well, the National Assembly met in the Church of St. Louis, where the majority of the representatives of the clergy joined them, efforts to restore the old order had served only to accelerate events. When, on June 23, in accord with his plan, the king finally addressed the representatives of all three estates, he encountered a stony silence. He concluded by ordering all to disperse. The nobles and clergy obeyed. The deputies of the common people remained seated in a silence finally broken by Mirabeau, whose short speech culminated, a military force surrounds the assembly. Where are the enemies of the nation? Is Catilin at our gates? I demand, investing yourselves with your dignity. With your legislative power, you enclose yourselves within the religion of your oath. It does not permit you to separate till you have formed a constitution. The deputy stood firm. Necker, conspicuous by his absence from the royal party on that day, found himself in disgrace with Louis, but back in the good graces of the National Assembly. Those of the clergy who had joined the assembly at the Church of St. Louis remained in the assembly. Forty seven members of the nobility, including the Duke of all the copyright Anne's, soon joined them. By June 27, the royal party had overtly given in, although the likelihood of a military counter-coup remained in the air. The French military began to arrive in large numbers around Paris and Versailles. In the Tsar copyright Anne's Royale of June 23, the king granted a chart octroi a copyright e, a constitution granted of the royal favour, which affirmed, 
subject to the traditional limitations, the right of separate deliberation for the three orders, which constitutionally formed three chambers. This move failed. Soon that part of the deputies of the nobles who still stood apart joined the National Assembly at the request of the King. The Estates General had ceased to exist, having become the National Assembly, though these bodies consisted of the same deputies elected by the separate orders. Reconstitution, messages of support poured into the Assembly from Paris and other French cities. On July 9, 1789, the Assembly, reconstituting itself as the National Constituent Assembly, addressed the King in polite but firm terms, requesting the removal of the troops, but Louis declared that he alone could judge the need for troops, and assured them that the troops had deployed strictly as a precautionary measure. Louis offered to move the assembly to Noyon or Soissons, that is to say, to place it between two armies and deprive it of the support of the Parisian people. Public outrage over this troop presence precipitated the storming of the Bastille, beginning the revolution. The Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, in August of 1789, the National Assembly drafted and instituted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. The legislation proclaimed, man is born and remains free and equal in rights. The Declaration guaranteed equal and inalienable rights for all citizens of France, and protected those rights from any government actions or legislation. After the passage of the Declaration, within the National Assembly, Minority groups throughout the French Empire fought to be included as French citizens and thus receive equal rights. The most notable group to petition for citizenship was the Gens de Couleur of Saint-Domingue. Their unsuccessful petition would eventually culminate in the Haitian Revolution. Notes References This article incorporates text from the public domain history of the French Revolution from 1789 to 1814, by Frenna Section as made available by Project Gutenberg. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. French Revolution. Encyclopaedia Britannica. Cambridge University Press. External links, http, www.assembly national fr8 amasp history of the National Assembly, http, www.sailororgwp content 2011 National Assembly French Revolution PDF National Assembly